Hey guys, uh, so today I wanted to talk about one of my favorite things and that is material design ripple buttons. They're just so satisfying to click. And I was uh, trying to come up with a solution that didn't involve um, you know, too much code or JavaScript uh, or downloading a, a giant framework. And I finally found a solution and I thought I'd share it with all of you so that you can also add some cool ripples to your buttons. Um, cool. So the this first video, I just want to show you some CSS that you can do, which will add a simple ripple to your button. Um, it won't move around when you click. We'll take a look at adding some JavaScript in another video. Um, but I think it's it's pretty cool and pretty easy and simple. So let's make a ripple button. So over here, I have this button. Um, nothing fancy going on here. Um, I am styling everything with rems and m's because i want this button to be able to scale um, if you don't know all about uh using m's and rems do check it out it's a pretty cool uh system uh, for developing components and ui uh pieces so uh so here's this button here uh by the way i'm using react for this you do not need to know react for this this is just uh simply for uh ease here um so we have this button class what i'm going to do here is i'm now going to make this a ripple button Okay, and now you can see we're back to a normal lame button, which I can easily change now by adding a ripple class. Okay, and what I'm gonna do here is, uh, even though um, I have this ripple class here now, it's not gonna do anything because I want to inherit these styles, right? So rather than adding button, button dash ripple, like some other libraries, okay, I'm going to use the power of sass to just extend the class. So now you can see my button dash ripple class also shares these styles with button, okay? Now, next thing I'm gonna do is we need a ripple. And rather than having to dictate the markup uh, in order to add this ripple and having to also have, you know, to edit things in two places, let's just use a pseudo element. So I have my after selector here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it some content. I'm going to give it a color of black at half opacity. Um, I'm going to give it a height and width of dollar ripple size, which up here is declared as four M's. Okay. And also, uh, let's do inline block because by default they are inline, which means that they will not listen to these properties right here, right? So now you can see I've got a nice ugly gray square here, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to do position absolutes and we're going to give it a position top and left of 50%, which will put the upper left corner of our ripple right in the center of the button. Now to combat that, and since we used M's up above, which are a fixed unit, I can do uh, a margin left and top here of negative half. So essentially, if you haven't heard of this trick before, what we're doing is we're basically pulling the element up and left by half of its size, which means that its origin, so to speak, is now perfectly aligned with the center of this button. Cool. Now, ripples have a border radius of 50% because they are circles. And to make sure that the ripple is always perfectly aligned, we need to this uh, position relative on the button. And we want to do overflow hidden because in this case, I don't want the ripple to go outside of my button, but you may like to do that. Um, cool. So now here is the magic. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add uh, a class of active or a selector for active on our button ripple class. Um, so you might be might have been wondering how am I gonna make this thing appear just when we click without using JavaScript? Like how can we do that without a click handler, right? Um, and it was so obvious after thinking about it. We have this powerful little thing here called the active selector, right? So when I click on a button and it is uh, when I click on a button and the mouse is down, it is active. As soon as the mouse is let go, it is no longer active. So what we can do is we can basically use that as a trigger for uh, clicking on an element. So what I'm gonna do here is, when the button ripple is active, we're going to select its after element, which is the same after element we have up here. And let's think about what we want it to do. So we want the ripple to once clicked, start from start from a zero size, in other words, a scale of zero, and 
grow to its set size, okay? Um, so we're gonna start at zero here, and we also want the ripple to only appear once it's been clicked and then kind of fade out. So we're gonna have an opacity of one here once it's uh, uh, clicked or active. Um, then once it, we want it to fade out after the click, right? So we're gonna set the opacity here to zero and transform scale to one, which if you're leaving it at one, you don't even need it. But um, if you want to, you know, you can also set it to a, a bigger size or something. Um, so we're just gonna leave it like that. All right. And getting error. Oh, I got a bracket. Okay. Right, so now I'm clicking here and you notice that nothing is happening. So why is that? Well, because remember, um, you're, uh, we want to transition between these two elements and what's happening is on both pieces, the element or the ripple is not visible, right? On one side, it's a scale of zero on one side, it's an opacity of zero. So to fix that, let's add the magic. This is a transition on those two uh, properties and these settings I actually stole from Material Design themselves. So they look really nice. Um, and notice how we have different times here. It just uh, pulls together really nice in this cubic bezier. Uh, cool. So uh, now we have this transition on our after element. And you'll see that it kind of works, but not really. It like freaks out. But notice if I click and hold the button down, you see it kind of like swooped in and like shrunk, right? So an element is only, or at least a button is only active when you hold the mouse down. As soon as I let go of the mouse, it goes back to its uh, normal state. So you see, this isn't really what I want, this is. And remember the reason is that a transition happens from one state to another. So it's trying to, when it goes to the active state, it is trying to uh, over 0.6 seconds and 0.3 seconds apply these animations, which looks fine when I uh, release the mouse. But if I just click very fast, it doesn't have enough time to reach the full value that we've set here. Right. So what we can do to remedy that, and this is what pulls it all together, is transition none when it's active. And so now you notice when I click, I get this nice satisfying ripple. And that is because when we transition to the active state, uh, there is no transition. So immediately as soon as you click, there is an opacity of one, scale of zero. Right. And then once the mouse button is let go, it slowly transitions back to this these uh the original size and a passive zero cool so you'll notice that this button only ripples in the middle regardless of where i click but honestly i think that just that alone is really nice and it can give your users some nice feedback i've noticed on some sites lately that when i click buttons i'm not always sure that i've clicked on it if something else on the screen doesn't happen because sometimes buttons just don't do anything and it's kind of weird honestly so here you go. If you're also a Ripple fan, uh, there's some quick CSS you can add. Um, I will post a link to a GIST in, uh, that has the code right here. And thanks for watching. And I'm going to go in over in another video uh, how we can add the JavaScript to move the Ripple around. Cool.